Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over UFC Australia from uh, a BFS perspective. The card starts at Saturday at 6.30 p.m. Uh, we're going to be also doing, again, a betting breakdown for the same card, probably tomorrow. The betting did really, really well last week, but again, it's more the process that is uh, most important. Um, the... DFS breakdown went really, really well. We got most of the takes right, except for the most important one, which was the recommendation that uh, you probably should have gone all in on Sergey Spivak, um, which, you know, from a mathematical perspective, I completely stand by. Just, just got rolled. That's the way it goes. Um, but overall, we did a good job of breaking down the fights, and we're going to get right back after it uh, uh, this weekend. Now, even though it is in Australia, there are most of the of the fighters are fighters we have seen before. So I do have a, a decent amount of faith in the uh, in the analysis. I don't see too much variance necessarily in the I don't know in the inputs. Let's put it that way. When you've had these these other cards like from Paris and from Singapore with all these local fighters, you really didn't exactly know. Uh, how fragile some of these projections and how fragile some of these numbers were, it, it set up for some kind of wild variations in the projections. But I think that this card, even though it's in Australia, uh, is relatively straightforward. That doesn't mean it's easy, but at least we can have some confidence that the inputs going into the analysis is, are somewhat, or somewhat, I don't say accurate, but at least somewhat representative of what's going to happen um, or what's expected to happen. It's a better idea. So first of all, it is a 12 fight card. So what that means is that you are going to need to prioritize upside with all of your positions and specifically with the underdogs, you know, and then that's usually the, mm, usually the most important factor on how to approach a slate is what, what type of underdogs you need to play. You know, if, if it's only a 10 or 11 fight card, just any kind of win is probably going to be good enough. But when you're getting up into 12 and 13 fights, uh, you're going to need usually to have a greater upside, even from your underdogs. And obviously it's all slate dependent. You know, if you have, you know, high upside fighters that are really, really expensive, uh, then it's not quite as important to demand upside from your underdogs because it's just more important to get the win so that you can get access to the lineups with all those high priced favorites. But on a card like this, I do think it's pretty important to prioritize the upside of your underdogs. It's always important to pr prioritize the upside of your favorites, but uh, that's usually the most important thing to think about when you're getting into some of these uh, some of these uh, slate analyses. Um, first of all, I guess we're going to start with the main event just for now, and I'll just tell you right now that 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 Israel Adesanya is going to be a full fade at 9700. Uh, he almost is always a full fade. He just his style is just not conducive to high DraftKings output. Uh, it's, uh, he's a striker, you know, world class striker, to say the least. Um, he does get knockouts from time to time, but uh, overall, he is not very conducive to high upside DraftKings scoring. And when you have ninety seven hundred, uh, it's just that 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 salary is just a joke. You know, it it's made because of his win odds. That's the, and it's his win odds and also the fact that it's a five round fight. You know, it, it, this is what caused this ninety seven hundred dollar price tag. Um, plus, maybe a little bit of name value. I don't know. But but at ninety seven hundred, given given the fact that he does not rate to finish in the first round or he's probably only about what's his. Let's take a look at his inside the distance line anyway. His, what's he inside the distance? Uh I don't even know I'm wasting my time with this analysis. We're, we're not going to play a share of him, but Asanya, out of sight, inside the distance, he minus 110 or so. You know, that that's what you need to be 9K if you're 9K. Um, uh, and you also prefer to have some wrestling upside here. I mean, unless he rates to knock Strickland out in the first round, which he does not, um it's just a it's just an atrocious play um i i hope for the field's sake that he's not highly owned um just because it's just a it really is just an atrocious play for for dfs purposes uh, for dfs gpp purposes um now on the other side of it you, know, you have strickland who 
unfortunately, he just doesn't win too often. You know, he's, he's the win odds here are, you know, he's plus 475. So he wins the fight only 20% of the time. Now, the, the good news is, I guess, that when he wins, he's just going to be optimal at 6,500. Okay. Um, so it's one of those weird things where, where Adesanya wins the fight 80% of the time. And of those, maybe he's optimal 10% at the most, I guess. Um, so uh, at 9,700, you know, he is probably optimal about 8% of the time, where at least Strickland is optimal probably about 20% of the time. So I would play, if you're going to play this fight at all, I would play Strickland. Um, and certainly twice as much as you would probably play Adesanya. As a matter of fact, just for funsies, I am going to play some Strickland, just because, again, 20% is not bad. Now, the only problem is, is that just because of his price and because he can sometimes get there in a loss, people are going to play. They always do. They always play this main event underdog because of the five rounds. And as a result, you're not getting that much of a break as far as ownership goes. You know, you're, you're playing a guy who's going to win it 20% of the time. And, okay, when he wins, he's optimal. But also when he wins, like, probably more like 30% of the people will have him, you know? So it's a little bit of, a, of an annoyance. But I am certainly going to be more inclined to play Strickland in GPPs than I am Adesanya. I will just leave it just straight at that. Now, if you told me that Adesanya was going to be like 10% owned somehow, I mean, it's just not going to be the case. He's going to be 40% owned, like he always is. Maybe maybe a little less because people are getting somewhat sharp. But um, when you have just a pure striker like him, at 9,700, you just you just can't play him in DFS. Now, can you knock him out in the first round? Make everybody look stupid? Sure. But it's just really, really unlikely. Um, okay, let's now go start from the bottom up here. We have, uh, what's his first name? I don't even know. Kevin Shusset versus, what's his nickname? Air, like Air Jordan? Okay. Uh, against Kiefer Crosby from Ireland. All right, so uh, Jusset at 8,400 and Crosby at 7,800. These middle, middle priced fights are always ones you have to consider just because they make the rest of your lineups just flow a little bit better. Now, when it comes to analysis, uh, to analyzing these, you want to have from an $8,400 fighter, um, if it's just going to be based on the inside the distance line, probably an inside the distance prop of about plus 200 or so, maybe a little bit better. But let's just start with like a plus 200. And if you don't have a plus 200 inside the distance prop, um, meaning that you, you, you are expected to finish the, the fight within about 33% of the time, you better have a little bit of, of wrestling upside. And with respect to Chissette, we'll get back, we'll scroll down to him here in best fight odds. Um, his inside the distance line is actually pretty reasonable at plus 160. Um, and and as, as a matter of fact, he does have, a, you know, some amount of wrestling upside as well. So uh, I think this is actually a pretty good play kind of right off the bat here. Um, on the other side, you have Crosby with the, just a hopeless inside the distance line, given his price tag. So I think right off the bat, I mean, we're going to, we could put Jusset in as a very, very reasonable $8,400 fighter here. This is, I wasn't even aware that his, Inside the distance line was that uh, was that strong. Um, I thought it was going to be more like plus two, two twenty or two thirty or something like that. But no, nah, I mean check this out. It's plus yeah, plus one sixty. Very very strong play actually. All right, moving on. We have Shane Young versus Gabriel Miranda. So first of all, with the win odds, you would expect Shane Young to be maybe a little bit more pricey than you said, right? Maybe so eighty six hundred. Take a look. Yeah, 8,600 versus Miranda, 7,600. So again, for 8,600, you need a little bit better than, than plus 220. You need a like, probably like plus 180 or so, maybe even a little better than that, maybe plus 150 or 160 to be playable in the absence of any you know takedown upside. And when you look at Shane Young, you have just kind of hopeless numbers here. His inside the distance line is plus 220 with no takedown upside. He's probably kind of a full fade. The interesting piece is, is Miranda. So Miranda, his inside the distance line is about a plus 170, accounting for VIG. And at plus 170, that's what you need if you're 8,400. He, he's actually 
He's actually the dog here at 7,600. So even though he rates to lose, you know, I want to see most of the time, right? He's plus 150. So he's going to lose probably 60% of the time. He's going to win 40% of the time. But this is a very, very strong inside the distance line for his for his price. Um, so he is definitely an extremely strong underdog to 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 go after. The only thing I worry about is is this is such an obvious type D, you know, GPP play that is going to be somewhat owned. And as a result, maybe, just maybe, Shane Young will show up with as a pretty, pretty decent leverage play. But he just looks like such an awful, awful play that I don't think I can do it. What I, I like to, to, to think about when you're trying to find good plays or great plays in DFS, uh, DFS MMA, when you have two guys fighting against one another or two girls fighting against one another, is you want this is this is you want DFS MMA one on one? Find an amazing play that looks completely amazing, and if his opponent is also a kind of good play, you play the kind of good play because the amazing play is going to be well owned because everybody's going to see all that. But if you have a pretty good play that's going to get leveraged against an amazing play. You play the pretty good play. Just because you find an amazing play that people are going to own, that doesn't necessarily mean you play the other side. The other side also has to be kind of pretty good. And I think that Shane Young is probably uh, probably an awful play. So uh, Shane Young is going to be a fade. Uh, Crosby is going to be a fade. But you said Miranda is actually a pretty, pretty strong way to start off this card. I mean, you get you get two finishes or you said you get a good decision with a bunch of takedowns and 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 you get the Miranda, you know, you get the Miranda experience working your way. I mean, that's a good way to start. And you know what? If they both lose, you know, you know what? There's a lot of other stuff to do. <laughs> start making your, your NFL lineups or something. Um so moving on, we have uh was it Charles Radke? Charles Radke against Blood Diamond. So 9,100, 7,100. So I'm expecting he's about a two to one favorite, right? Let's take a look. It's actually a three to one favorite. I mean, this is extremely, this is an extremely strong price for a three to one favorite. And, and the reason why is because there are guys above him that are like plus minus 400, something like that. That's why he's, you know, you can't make everybody 9,500. They, they, they don't ever make, two fighters the same price right so he's gonna be 9100 he's gonna probably this is a pr very very good uh price based on his win odds but at 9100 you've got to be able to show either a minus you know 110 inside the distance line or um a, a strong takedown upside and radke well first of all radke does have a strong inside the distance line of minus one 35 minus 120. And in addition to that, he's got really, really strong takedown upside. And 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 you, you know, you have a, a style matchup here which is incredibly conducive to him. You know, Blood Diamond, his, that is his Achilles heel, is his takedown defense. And you know, uh, whenever you have, you know, that combination of one guy's weakness and the other guy's strength, that's kind of a tough thing to overcome in, in MMA. So I'm expecting Radke to get his takedowns and do his thing. You know, um, is that going to necessarily lead to a finish? I mean, no, but it's going to happen more often than it doesn't. So uh, I think Radke is a very, very strong play um, at 9,100. Now, again, you always have to think about if he's such a strong play and everybody's going to know it, what does the diamond side look like? You know, like if diamond is at least pretty good, you're going to have to play him. So diamond being pretty good, what that has to mean is that he's going to have to probably have an inside the distance line of about for looking, I would say by plus 325 or something like that, um, because he doesn't have the win odds, right? We already said he's going to lose the fight like, you know, what is that? Three to one. I mean, he's going to win the fight only 25% of the time. Um, so he's going to have to put up a number here. And that's going to probably entail a plus 350 inside the distance line. Let's see what it looks like. Blood diamonds inside the distance. Uh, well, they, they call them 
Blood Diamond. It's just not going to be good enough. And I and I would be, I would be a little more forgiving of this inside the distance line because I think Radke could be popular because again it does look like kind of an amazing play, um, but he's just it's just got to be better than this the Blood Diamond play. So he's probably just going to be out for me. So uh, Radke filling out this lineup, this mock lineup, really really well. And Blood Diamond is just not. I don't think he's going to make it. Uh, all right, uh, Nazrat Hasparas. Hackbarast versus Luis, Luis, no, Landon Quinones, big price, 9,500 versus 6,700. So for 9,500, you're expecting to see, well, normally you expect to see about a plus three, 300 or a minus 300, but because we know already that Radke's price at 9,100 at minus 300, I presume that Hasparast is probably minus 400. And when you look at the prices, yeah, he's actually almost 500. So He's going to win the fight about 80% of the time. But at that price, 9,500, that's not necessarily good enough. You've got to show at 9,500, that's a big number, man. I mean, you've got to show not, it's not even good enough to have an inside the distance line of minus even 150. I mean, you've got to show takedown upside or a, a, a first round finish upside of maybe at least that happens 33% of the time. And when you look at the, the internals here, you know, Hock Bras, you know, his inside the distance line is not even 110. I mean, he's plus one, four, you know, well, this is minus 175, but plus 130. No, he's plus 130. So it's not, he's not in favor to finish inside the distance. And then so the absence of take that upside as well. I mean, he's just basically probably a full fade here. Um, Quinones just doesn't win often enough, and this inside the distance line is hopeless. So I think this fight is probably probably a, a, a full pass for me. Um, now, again, when I say, you know, full fade or whatever it is, does that mean I'm going to fade him completely in 150 max? Um, I mean, I, I didn't mean that, but maybe I will. Because <laughs> like, there, there are other guys that I want to kind of get to. So you do have to make some kind of technical – fades here so i think for the purposes of this analysis when i say i'm full fading crosby uh crosby full fading young full fading uh diamond maybe full fading this whole fight i think like, let's let's for now presume i'm literally playing them in no lineups certainly not going to play any of these guys in like 20 max or lower okay ja uh, jamie malarkey versus john mc john mcdessey john mcdessey you have malarkey 8900 versus 7300 so you're expecting again based on what these other prices have shown that malarkey is going to be about normally an eighty nine hundred dollar fighter. You're going to see, you know, like minus one eighty or something. But because of the the way this this linear pricing structure works, you're going to see malarkey probably when you look at the odds, probably a minus two eighty or so. Let's take a look. Um, yeah, I guess so, minus two sixty something like that. Now, but again, at eighty nine hundred, you know, you need to have either an inside the distance line of I wouldn't say necessarily minus 110, but maybe at least plus 100. Um, or significant takedown upside and, and preferably a combination of the two. Let's take a look. Jamie Malarkey, uh, inside the distance, is plus 230. I mean, that's really awful. Um, that's just not going to be good enough. The only thing is the takedowns. You know, he, he was doing a... He does a pretty good job sometimes when it comes to taking people down. I mean, let's take a look at his, his, his fight logs here. He did have three takedowns against Namov, and then he just got clocked. And he did have three takedowns against Prado, which is pretty strong. But he only, you know, he's only scored 81 fantasy points in that situation. In Farazian fight, he had five takedowns and then lost decision. I don't know. This guy just doesn't. Doesn't really doesn't really produce. You know what I mean? That's the best I can describe this. Doesn't produce a lot of fantasy points. He's got a yeah, a 69 point performance in a win at 9,100. So I hate to say this, but uh fight's probably a pass for me. Um, you know, listen, we talk about how to make big slates seem small. I think we're finding a pretty, pretty direct way to do that uh pretty quickly here. 
Um, I right, this next fight, I know that I'm going to go against the numbers here because I'm completely biased, but I'll, just, I'll tell you that in advance. But we'll go through the numbers first. So according to the numbers, we have Jack Jenkins against Shepe Mariscal. Jack Jenkins is 8,700 versus 7,500 for Mariscal again. Normally, when someone's 8,700, you expect them to see maybe like minus 150. But because of the way this linear pricing model is working this time, I guess Jenkins is probably going to be based on maybe a minus 180, uh, 180 line. Let's take a look. Even more. I mean, well, it's minus 200 plus the VIG is minus 180. So for an 80, what do we say? 8,800? For an $8,700 fighter, he doesn't need as strong an inside the distance line as some of these others, obviously. He's going to need probably, you know, plus 130 or so, maybe plus 140, plus some takedown upside, which he sort of has. So if he has an inside the distance line about plus 140, I'll listen. So let's just take a look. Jack Jenkins uh inside the distance plus 230 just no thanks you know um what's this takedown upside really look like here you have let's see you only have a couple here he did have four takedowns against john shanis but he actually got out grappled by by jamal emmers um as a matter of fact this was uh, when when this fight ended if you looked at the at the fight odds uh, on DraftKings, Jenkins was actually like a ten to one underdog. <laughs> Everybody's a hundred percent sure that that um, that Emmers won the decision. Uh, I wouldn't have been surprised. I mean, it was in Florida, and Emmers is from Florida. I don't, uh, but somehow they gave it to Jenkins. I don't know, but according to these numbers, unless he's going to have like significant takedown upside, I mean, this is just probably not a really good play. But I'll tell you, you know, you, you look at the other side of this, you look at um at, at Mariscal, and Mariscal at 80, what is that, 70, 500? He has to have an inside the distance line of maybe only plus 250 or so to be viable. And let's take a look and see what that is. Uh, See, it says here Mariscal inside the distance, like plus 700. And we'll, we'll talk about this when we go to the betting breakdown. Here's where my bias kind of comes in. Now, for those of you that don't know, I mean, I made the, the live final of the MMA thing this past season, and I was unfortunately unable to go due to personal reasons, but spent a whole bunch of time analyzing that live final slate, which I was able to play. And one of the real big key pivot spots on that whole card was – the Trevor Peak versus uh, Chepe Mariscal fight. Um, you know, it was basically a pick em fight. And yet, it's like 60, I expected 60% of the people or 70% to be on peak. And when I listened to all the content, it was more like 100. I mean, like nobody gave Mariscal a chance. And yet, it was, you know, it was basically a pick em price. Now, at the end, the line didn't move a little bit. You can actually see it when you pull it up here. I'll show you, I think. Let's see, it usually tracks the odds um, from this last fight. We'll take a look at it. Um, let's see if we can pull it up. Um, does it have the, no, I guess it doesn't have the, um, yeah, it doesn't have the odds. It, it, it's got to be somewhere. I just forgot where to, where to find it. But, um, and, and Mariscal just, just, it was a freaking war. I mean, they just went out there. And people thought that Peak was going to knock this dude out in the first round. Guy came into it on freaking short notice up a weight class, and he just laid it on him. I mean, he he took all the punches. He threw him back. He had 15 full – I would say 15 full minutes of full cardio because these guys were both dead exhausted at the end. But they threw like a million significant strikes, and he put up 130 points or something like that. This guy's a freaking legend. You know what I mean? I'm not, I'm not betting against this guy. You know, and even listen, I know I'm being biased because listen, he, 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 I had him. I ended up making a lot of money in that. And I was just surprised when I saw this line. And again, this is not for me to say, you know, this is really violating all forms of DFS uh, analyses to say that the line is wrong. Um, I don't know. I know what I saw, you know, and this guy, 
if 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 Chad Jenkins can keep this piece this guy apart and keep a nice technical performance, whatever it is, and and get there, that's that's you know good for him. But but I think that this fight's going to be a freaking war. I think Mariscal is going to bring it, and I think that 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 at seventy five hundred, I think he's an extremely strong underdog here. I don't care what the inside the distance line says. That's going to be my sort of hot take because I never really. Uh, approach things this way. I usually rely on the numbers, but I, you know what I mean? I'm just going to have this. Um, so I'm going to uh, put Mariscal in my very short list of, of underdogs that I like here. You know, Miranda so far, Mariscal. I, but I think Mariscal is just, I, I haven't, I've heard what, what, I haven't heard anybody pick him either. I mean, I don't understand. People have such a short memory, I guess. I, I don't, I don't know. People usually are all kinds of recency bias and stuff like that. I guess people are just saying that, well, Trevor Peak was just terrible. So this is a big step up, I guess. I don't know. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'm in there. Let's put it this way. And I, I'd like to say that if, in fact, I'm right, that this is going to be a war, maybe maybe, maybe I should play some Jenkins. Because, again, if, if Mariska really does bring it, then there's just a lot of pace and a lot of stuff going on. Maybe he does Jenkins can get a finish at a big price. So. Uh, at, at, with a lot of upside, so I'm gonna actually am gonna play some Jenkins, but but Mariscal is certainly my preferred option at least. All right, moving on, we have Carlos Ulber versus Da Nun Young. I'm butchering that name, I am sure. So you have Carlos Ulber at 9200, and at 9200, you know, usually you get about a minus three, you know, minus 250. But because again, of all these high prices around him, he's probably we're probably talking about a minus three hundred dollar guy. Uh, about right, but minus actually not quite. So he's minus two fifty. So at ninety two hundred, again, this is common. You're looking for an inside distance line, but at least one at minus one ten. And in the absence of takedown upside, which exists here, uh, well, I mean the the absence of takedown upside exists here. It's not so many takedowns. You really want uh, the ability to finish in the first round, you know, because he is a striker. And as a striker, unless you get him out of there in the second round with multiple knockdowns, you really need to get there in the first round to be optimal at that price. So that's what we're really looking at is not just the inside the distance line, but also the inside round one. So you're looking here and Oberg inside the distance, extremely strong. You know, he's minus 130, should be good enough. But let's take a look at the round one here. This is actually pretty good. Oberg round one is pl like plus one seventy five or so. So that's that's strong enough. So so he's going to be a good player. These fights, these 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 strikers with the KO or round one or bust upside is is ex are usually real real. I don't say bad plays, but they're always pretty fishy because you you really have five minutes to get it done. Um, it's so much nicer to. Get the guys with the takedown upside. Even the um, even the ones with the with the inferior inside the distance line, like um, like who's the guy from earlier? Uh, Radke. Like Radke, similar price tag. And yeah, his inside the distance line is a little worse. You know, minus one twenty as opposed to minus one fifty. But he's got that takedown upside. You know, so first of all, some of his finishes come with take you know come with takedowns as well. And not only that, but he can not get the finish and still get there. Where if uh, if Ulberg does not get the finish, he never gets there. You know, and, and not only that, but if he doesn't get the finish in the first round, it's unlikely that he gets there. So I think he's a good play, but I still think that the Radke is probably better. Um, all right, moving. Uh, oh, and then uh, Da Un Young at his price. Again, we're going to need probably again. Let's be consistent. Maybe about a plus 350 inside the distance. I think that's fair enough. That's what we were asking for Blood Diamond. I think we could ask the same thing from Dao da Young. I think there's a chance he has it. Let's see. No, there's not really. It was like plus four. Again, I'm, I'm accounting for Vig here, so plus 420. I mean, he's a better play than Blood Diamond, but not as good as, you know, I mean, certainly not as good as Miranda, but Compare like let's let's compare this again. So Young is like plus three fifty five forty nine. Where was Blood Diamond again? Blood Diamond was. Um, let's see. Blood Diamond. What is this? Plus. 
well, I don't know, plus 600, no, 550. No, he's going to be a better play than, than Blood Diamond. And yet still, probably not that great a player. All right, so Tyson Pedro versus Anton Turkali. So this is the other, the other pivotal mid-range fight that, that people are going to need to consider. Um, we talked about Jossette versus Crosby. Um, that even as that's not even as closely aligned as this as this one. Um, this is basically straight pick them, depending on which side you get. Well, actually, it's, it's basically straight pick them, and the pricing is pretty much straight pick them. You know, eighty two hundred, eight thousand. So again, what are we looking at? So at, at these prices, you need to get. It'd be nice, right, to have an inside the distance line of about a plus two fifty, or take down upside. Let you know, we want to compare them to some of these others. So, you know, you have Jusset, for example, who had an inside the distance line of really strong. It was like plus 160 accounting for big. And he also had some takedown upside. Now, when you compare that to this fight, you have, let's see what we have here. First of all, who is the $8,200 fighter anyway? Not that matters too much, but so Tukale is the $8,200 fighter. So Tukale, Inside the distance, not bad. Not bad at all, actually. So he's like plus 180. You compare that to Gisette, which was what again? Gisette was about plus 160. So these are actually pretty close. I think both of these are pretty pretty decent plays, considering also that 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 Sertali, he's got some takedown upside. Um, so I think that Sirkali and Jusette are very, very similar. Um, the other side of this, Pedro, his inside, his actually his inside the distance line is a little bit better than uh than Sirkali. He doesn't carry with him the same amount of takedown upside, but 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 I have to I have to respect the Pedro inside the distance line at this price. So I think that well, you certainly compare him, Pedro, to say Shane Young. Again, he's that other mid-range option. Like Shane Young, inside the distance, like plus, he was like plus 230. And then Pedro, what did we say? Plus 170. I mean, Pedro's a much better play. Okay. So I think that you have to give Turkali the nod because of the takedown upside. But Pedro is certainly in play. Um, so I, I would play both sides. Of this. Um, okay. Moving on, we have Justin Taffa versus Austin Lane. For those that don't remember, that same card I spoke about with uh, with uh, Chepi Mis uh, Mariscal and Trevor Peak. This was uh, this was a really lucky fight for me because I, I faded this one, and a couple of people that were competing with me for you know some heavy duty scores had the uh, Justin Taffa side, and he was a really good play. I just, you know, I just, I just didn't fit my lineup. He had about a minus 110 inside the distance line. He was about, I think, the same price. Um, and after about 35 seconds, he got eye poked, so we never got a chance to see. And fortunately, when the illegal eye poked happened, it basically declared the fight a no contest, and the whole fight busted instantly. So didn't really have a chance to see what was happening. You, you, Lane did get a couple of good body kicks in. He looked okay. But uh, Toppa was, you know, was walking him down a little bit. So um, I can't imagine why you would take anything from that fight. So as long as the, the line is similar, I just imagine that we're going to look at it the same way. So anyway, so you have Toppa, 9K versus 7,200. So again, we're expecting him to be about a minus 250 favorite or so. Take a look. We have uh, maybe minus 200. I mean, this isn't really that great. You know what I mean? Because we have other guys with at similar prices. Like Radke is 9,200. He's like minus 300. Uh, yeah, that, that's not insignificant here. You know, uh, you had other guys. Um, like even Malarkey, who's priced lower than Tafa. 
he's minus 250, you know. So uh, from a win odds perspective on this slate, Top is actually kind of poor. Where he makes up for it, though, is his inside the distance line because at 9K, again, you need about a minus 110 or so um, to get there. And that's what he's got, right? Um, let's see. Top inside the distance, about, you know, minus 130 accounting for big. And again, the problem is going to be that you, as, as, a, as a striker, a pure striker, he really needs to get there in the first round. So let's take a look at that. Well, 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 well. Top of round one is only plus 120. So they're... They, <laughs> They're really thinking that he wins in round one or he loses. So this is actually pretty, I mean, this is pretty legit, you know? So, so I think he's a very, very strong play. And, and then on the other side of this, though, you have Tafa at 7,200. You look at his inside the distance line, let's go. I mean, plus 230, you know, that for a, a, a $7,200 fighter, remember we compare him to some of the blood diamonds and the, and the, um, Whoever Olberg was fighting down young. I mean, this is an extremely strong inside the distance line. And this also goes to validate how strong of a play, honestly, the um uh what's his name? The Gabriel Miranda is. And Miranda, his inside the distance line to a call was was a plus. Where is this? Miranda inside the distance, like plus 170. So I think that it reminds me of what a good play that was. And Austin Lane is an extremely strong play. So, so we will add Austin Lane to, to the list of underdogs, you know, talked about this fight. So, so we're getting a pretty decent, decent uh, portfolio of underdogs here, like between Mariscal, Miranda, Austin Lane. I mean, those are three very solid shots. And then, you get this this other mid range fight between with Tricali and Pedro both sides of that. You can really you know you can build some good lineups and you get the mid range stuff with with you said as well. You know I'm not saying to play something like this and leave two thousand on the table. I, now watch this is going to win, but because um, listen you, you do you do want to get some of those favorites. You know like like Tafa Ulber, uh, uh those those are. Very, very strong plays. And as you can see, you can play two of them probably really easily, you know, and still have really, really good lineups. So I think this this card is really good from like a 20 max perspective. It might not be that great as a 150 max stuff because I think plays do kind of stand out. So you're going to get like probably a decent amount of dupes here. But um, uh, from a 20 max perspective, I, I think I know where my core is coming from. Well, I would think, but we, because we got some other fights still left to go, like starting with this Manel Cop fight. So Manel Cop at 9,300 over Feliz Dos Santos, uh, Feliz, uh, Felicio Dos Santos. Uh, again, 9,300, you'd expect him to have a, you know, maybe minus 260, 270. Maybe on a card like this, maybe he'd be coming from a minus 300. And he's a full minus 400. I mean, this is really strong. Um, not to mention his inside the distance line, which we're going to talk about. And remember, 9,300, I mean, he needs to have an inside the distance line of at least minus 110 plus, plus you know, take 10 upside, or maybe minus 150. Plus, if he's just a pure striker, um, you probably want a round one prop of plus 200. Let me just remind myself of whether he has take down. No, he doesn't really take anybody down. So it is just going to be about the striking. The good thing is that his opponent's going to bring the heat. That's all the opponent does. This this um this DeSanto. So it's not as if this is just can't be a patient fight. Someone's going down here. Um, let's take a look just for funsies of what what cops numbers are. I'm sure they're gonna be really strong. Cop inside the distance minus like 160. I mean that's pretty strong. Cop round one. Cop round one plus 175. I mean that's. I gotta tell you that's pretty strong, but but. Something very fishy about this other line. This this Justin Taffa round one. I mean, is that real? I mean, it's real in that you know that that's what they're offering you, but but that doesn't mean that you could book the other side, which is you know the way way things were 
Like top of round one, it says here only plus 120. Is top really a better play than 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 Manel Cop? Is that possible? I mean, if it is, if this if this inside the distance line, top of win in round one is for real. You know, let's you know, I'm just one. Just, just, just because I'm going to go to the sports book here. It's not going to let me actually bet anything because I'm on zoom. I want to see legit. Like if they're up even, no, that's not even up yet. Let's look uh, round props. Let's just see. Where is, uh, let's see. First of all, Oberg. Let's just see the winning round round one plus one thirty. Oberg. This Tafa thing is really expected to, to finish in round one, like minus 150 in round one, where Kopp is pulling for, like, I guess Tafa is a better play than Manel Kopp. I, I couldn't imagine that being the case. So, again, as I was saying, if in fact that's true, then Austin Lane becomes like really, really good leverage, as I described earlier. If Tafa is that great of a play, we've already said that Austin Lane's a pretty good play. So, Austin Lane's going to be a pretty strong GPP option because. I'm telling you, all the projection systems are going to get to whatever I just observed about the inside the distance line with Tafa. Tafa, if he's really minus 110 to knock him out in round one, he's just going to show up everywhere. He's just casted, right? Um, so Austin Lane is probably going to be a really, really strong uh, piece on this, on this card. All right. Um, okay, we are down to the last... Are we down to the last two? Yes. Let me pull up the. Sorry. Let's pull up the. Uh, the. Uh, slate again. And the co main event we have. Oh, okay. So but hold on. The Dos Santos side. Um, He just doesn't win often enough. That's the best I can describe this. He wins it, what, 20% of the time? Maybe 23% of the time. And let's look at his inside the distance line. I mean, it's plus like a thousand. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, just not going to do it. Um, Co main event, Tai Tuivasa versus Alexander Volkov. So, you have Volkov is a minus 250 favorite. I, I presume that means he's like 9K like everybody else. Let's just take a look. It's only 8,800. I mean, compare him to who's the other 8,800 guy we just kind of talked about? Not Jenkins. Well, Tafo is 9K. Volkov, uh, uh, Malarkey was minus 260. Volkov, what did we just say he was? Minus 300. That's 250. I mean, it's fair. But let's again, let's focus in on the, on, on the other stuff. So the inside the distance line for someone of his price. We'd like to be about a plus 110, right, at, at, at 8,900. What, 8,900, 8,800? 8, yeah, 8,800, maybe about a plus 110 would be nice. Um, and the real you know, it would be nice to have some takedown upside as well. But let's just start with the inside the distance line. So Volkov, inside the distance, is minus 120, extremely strong. Okay, Not to mention the fact that that I'm pretty sure that he's got some takedowns in his re in his repertoire. He hasn't really used them recently. Um, but you look at why, you know what I mean? Like, so he fought Romanov, and Romanov was the takedown genius, and he, he blasted him in the first round. Um, he, he knocked out Rosenstruck in the first round. Aspinall, he just kind of ran into a buzzsaw. Tybori, that was a th that was a three round striking battle, but he wasn't going to take Tybori down. Um, Cyril Gan was a really pretty reasonable fifteen, you know, uh, five round striking battle. I would have been nice if he tried to take him down, given that Gan's takedown defense is not that great. So I guess he doesn't have really that great takedown uh, upside. Um, maybe a little bit, but that's certainly not going to be his main game plan. His main game plan is really going to be probably just to win a kickboxing fight and keep him in range. I, I don't, I don't really like that inside the distance line, but we, we, this is not what about what we like or not. It's about what's out there. 
So he does look like an 8,800 is a pretty solid favorite. On the other side, I, I just know Tui Voss is going to show up as a strong play. I mean, he's 7,400. I mean, what's his inside of this? I'm afraid to look. I mean, you're here when he needs to be like a plus 350 or so to be a good play. And I just know he's going to be really strong. Let's see. Tui Vasa inside the distance is plus 270, which is good enough for me. So Tui Vasa is going to make our, uh, again, our list of underdogs. Uh, again, let's, let's review these for a minute because we just, we, we already went over the main event, but Tui Vasa is going to make it. And again, Volkov's a decent favorite. Already talked about the main event. If anything, we're going to play Strickland. So let's kind of review. Let's let's review the underdogs because that's where we have to start. And then we'll talk, go back to the favorites. Uh, Gabriel Miranda, strong underdog. Uh, Chepe Mariscal will be, ex- I think, extremely low-owned uh, underdog. Maybe not, but that's I haven't heard a lot of people talking about it. Um, we're not going to consider the mid-range fights yet, um, but Tuivasa, strong underdog. Austin Lane, strong underdog. So you have all four of these are very, very strong GPP players. Um, then these mid-range fights, you know, between uh, – Turkali Pedro, and I guess that was the only one. Talked to, we already talked about Young Miranda. I think you play either side of the Pedro uh, Turkali fight, and I think the last kind of underdog is you could play Strickland, okay? Because when he wins, he's going to make optimal. And then the other mid range guy we talked about was Giuseppe. You know, um, as far as the, the big favorites go. We're full fading Adesanya. Volkov looks reasonable enough. Kopp looks reasonable enough. You know, I think all these guys look very, very similar between Olberg, Tafa, Volkov, and Kopp. I think all of their their you know their metrics are very, very similar. Um, I think that Hasbras is probably a full fade. Hasbras is full fade, um, and Radke is really strong. So I think there's – what it's going to come down to, really, is whether you play the mid-range fighters. Because if you don't – I mean, if you do something like, you know, Tui Va- – let's say you played all the underdogs that we talked about. You played Tui Vasa. Uh, who was the other ones? Tui Vasa, Lane, for example, and um, Miranda. Then you could you could play all these favorites. You know what I mean? You could just shuffle them and deal. You know, and and those are some pretty good. I gotta tell you, those are some pretty good lineups. So you get those three dogs home. I mean, you're in business with those favorites. And then you know, then you could screw around with with the Giuseppe. You know, very very strong mid range player. And you could screw around with the um um what's his name and the Turkali, pretty strong mid range player. Once again, just to remind ourselves, Miranda, um, Mariscal, Lane. Oh, there are four of them. Tuivasa. I think all four of these are just kind of the nuts. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, so what that means is that, like, Dos Santos, you know, all this stuff. Um, Quinones, Blood Diamond, you know, Crosby. And some of these underdogs, I just young. I'll have, I'll probably have zero of them because these guys look really, really strong. If anything, I'll have aside from these four, I will have the uh, the strip. And I guess that's going to do it. Uh, stay tuned for the betting breakdown, which is going to happen tomorrow. But uh, until then, uh, good luck. It should be a very, very good card.